Hey guys, Matt Warren here. This is video number three. Thanks so much for being here and for trying to learn and uh, taking the step to get out of vagueness and uh, step into clarity when it comes to numbers. In the first video, we talked about getting started, what kind of tools we needed, the tools that really helped me. I shared with you some of those. In the second video, we talked about personal financial statements. We walked through where to where do you put the cash? How do we calculate net worth? We talked about where to put the debt. In this video, we're gonna talk about the daily spending plan. And of the daily spending plan, there's a key component of it before we get into the spreadsheet, that's the daily spending journal. And I, I really wanna not rush through this. I believe that this is just as important as the spreadsheet the daily spending journal is a simple journal that every day I, I update. And what I would like for you to do is to invest in a nice journal. There is something very important in my mind about having a nice journal that you can take good care of and really enjoy writing. So what I'm gonna do is share with you a, a few things that I have found. And you can find this on my website at pathtowarren.com. This uh, blog I wrote, it's uh, daily journaling, what tools work best for me. And you can see all the different tools that I like to use. And I've got a, a link in the body of this blog right here where you can go to moleskin.com and buy the exact journal that I like to use. This is what it looks like. It's a Moleskin Pro. It's a classic notebook. It's hardcover. I like the extra large size. It's just something that's substantial. I like to use the size that, that fits an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper inside of it. The first uh, journal that I got the papers would kind of hang out over the edges. It wasn't quite eight and a half by 11, but I've gradually grown into the really large size that's eight and a half by 11. And it, it, it suits me well. It's got a nice little string in the middle, as you can see here. It's got a elastic band that you can keep on the day that you're using it or whatever day you're writing in. It's about 27, 28 bucks was shipping close to 35 or so. The other important tool that I like to use is a nice pencil. Uh, some people like to use pen and that's all that they use, but I make several mistakes a day and have to correct it. And there's something about this Pentel 0.7 lead P207 mechanical pencil that I've found to come to love. I like the blue one. I've got a buddy that likes the gold one, whichever suits you. I would strongly suggest buy a nice pen or a nice pencil and invest in a hardcover book. This book, as you're going to see coming up, the spending journal is very important. So one reason why I got these hard journals is every day gets a page. And what ended up happening is I've got several sitting on my shelf. I've got several of these books that have accumulated over the last couple of years. And just of the last couple of months, I started to label them. And I wanted to share what that looks like. So this is under uh, one of my blogs, but I, I went through and labeled these guys with the dates. And it just says journal 11, 11, 19 through 1, 25, 20. And I, I really, love that I did this because it's so helpful if something if I remember like I need to go back and look at some notes from the trip or go back and look at a client visit that I had what that client said I could pull it back up based on the day of the, the trip and it's the same label I just put it on the spine as well as on the front cover recently just to give you a quick story I had I had taken a trip about a year and a half ago down to Atlanta to, to visit with a client. And 
halfway through his meeting, he gave me a manager of another company's name and said, oh, you need to call Andrew. Andrew is a good buddy of mine, mentioned by name. He's a great guy. And when they did that, he I said, hey, do you happen to have his number handy? So oh, yeah, it's right here. And he, he read it off. And I wrote it down in my journal on that day while I was visiting him, along with the other notes from the visit. And he even gave me his email address. Well, it dawned on me a few months later that I hadn't gone back and updated that information in our database and put him in our database. Several months went on by. I, I, I just didn't get around to it or forgot about it. And then all of a sudden I realized, hey, I really need to get that into our system. So I went on my Outlook calendar, pulled up when I was in Atlanta. I found the exact date and I simply went to my journals. And if it was December of 2018, I pulled up this journal right here, flipped through to, I could very easily find the date because each day gets a page. I just flipped over to that day of the calendar and there was the phone number and I was able to salvage that and reached out to the, the client. So once you do this for a while, you might get to where you love the labeling process so that you can find these notes and refer back to them later. Pretty neat stuff. So we've talked about the type of journal, uh, ways to store the journal and label the journals. The next item on the left-hand side, this really has nothing to do with the spending journal part, but I wanted to just take a second and explain a few things about what I use my journal for. So this area at the top is, it says good, bad. When you open up the page, this is on the left-hand side. This good area and bad area, this is what we refer to in the 12-step program called the tent step. It says, we continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. Several guys do their 10th step in the evening. In fact, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous talks about taking a, a, a daily inventory at night. That doesn't work for me because at night I'm exhausted and I'm trying to put my daughter to bed, I'm trying to enjoy some time with the family after dinner. I'm cleaning dishes and doing laundry and things like that. So it doesn't work for me to do it at night. But what does work for me is that I do, I write three good things that happened and three bad things that happened. Sometimes there's not any bad, but I always can find three good things that I did the day before. It's just like, it could be as simple as worked hard at the gym or had a great meeting with this client or read a good book with the, my daughter, whatever that is, that's my 10th step. And I write it in there, you know, something bad might be I lost my cool or I skipped the gym class today, you know, whatever it is, I write the bad thing here. And that's the 10th step. And if you'll see, just to kind of jump ahead here, this area down here where it says 10th, that's where I've got a little checklist. And this was, this was back in uh, August of 2020 when I wrote this blog. But what you can see is I created a little checklist of important things that I need to do to my uh, for my recovery uh, every day. And as I do them, I will check them off. So that's the 10th step. This is the gratitude list. So I, this is very much related to money. So if you're getting off, um, if you're starting to wonder why I'm talking about a gratitude list in a financial, you know, getting out of vagueness in the clarity workshop this is very important i would strongly suggest that you get your your journal and write out 10 gratitudes i am grateful for i am grateful for i am grateful for i choose to have my number one every morning be i am grateful for staying sober and solvent yesterday that is a physical tangible gratitude that i can thank my higher power for every day if i stay sober and solvent it works, it's working right now, it's continued to working, so I'm, I'm gonna keep doing it. And I'll, I'll fill out this little gratitude list. I'm grateful for blank, I'm grateful for blank. 
it doesn't take that long once you get in the groove of it. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I've got some updated photos that I can show you guys. These are called bookend zeros. So this is my most recent blog called Checklist, and I would encourage you to go to pathtowarren.com forward slash checklist. Checklist, uh, and you can read all about the different kinds of things that I have on my bookend zeros and why I call them bookend zeros. I don't want to get into all of that, but under my gratitude list, you will see that I do a prayer list, an affirmation list, a fear list, needs list, feelings list, and an idea list. I'm not expecting you to do all these things. These are just some things that I've grown to try to encourage myself to write down, you know, what am I feeling today? Do I have an idea that I can write down so that I can look back on it and say, hey, this idea was started from a seed, you know, that I heard somebody say, and it happened on November 4th, you know. I can go back and look at ideas. It also gets my brain into thinking about what do I feel right now? What are my ideas? You know, what are my needs? I need to go take a nap. I need to go eat lunch. I need to clear my inbox because I'm getting you know, overwhelmed. Fear inventory, a, a, a quick, simple, what, what do I fear today? And a lot of times I don't fear, fear anything. But there are several days, though, where I'm fear I'm fearing um, telling somebody something at work because I'm I fear they'll reject me, fear of abandonment, uh, I fear that my daughter won't do well on a test today. You know, whatever that is. Some people call it false evidence appearing real. I need to make note of that and just write it down. A lot of times, just the act of writing it on paper helps me to realize it's just a fear. And I can turn that over to my higher power. Affirmations, it, this is really important for me because telling myself, you know, Matt, I affirm you are doing well with your numbers. Matt, I affirm you're good at making client calls. Matt, I affirm you're getting better at making videos like this. You know, affirming myself allows me to not have to go seek affirmation from other people, which are what I like to call attaboys. And I try very hard to not seek attaboys from other people. It turns into like a codependent situation. And then prayers. I like to pray for three people or, or three things uh, or three situations every day. So. We're gonna leave that where it is right now, but I would encourage you right now to stop and write down the things that you need to do daily. That could be check the bank account, do a spending plan, do push-ups, do abs, you know, track your time, whatever those things are, I would encourage you to make a little checklist in your journal so that when you complete the item, you can check it off. And, and it, if it's the end of the evening and you haven't done one of those things, things there's a little bit of an incentive to hey i need to go so i can check this off on my to-do list that works for me it works very well for me there are some things like linkedin like this li right here linkedin today i actually did like seven things on linkedin but the last seven days i have not done anything on linkedin so what this means right here is i, I can check the li box whenever i do one thing, you know, a post, a like, a share, or a comment. If I do any of those four items on LinkedIn, then that gets me into my client's feed and it helps to grow my network. Well, today, just to show you the power of this checklist and how cool it is, because I did seven, I was able to go back and put seven check marks on the past seven days where I had not checked that LI on my journal and it felt really good it felt really good i promise um, so we'll come back into some of these later there are i'm going to scroll down here to the bottom of this blog there's some some descriptions of each one of these 
that I encourage you to go to pathtowarren.com forward slash checklist. And you can see the checklist of things that I do every day from push-ups, gratitudes, prayers, affirmations, spending journal, spending plan, tracking net worth, checking my calendar. Who would have thought that checking my calendar would have been something I need to check off of my checklist every day. But once I missed an appointment uh, with a boss, or I, I wasn't prepared for a meeting at three o'clock in the afternoon, it dawned on me that it was on my calendar and I got the invite reminder request at like 2.45 and I had no time to prepare for that meeting. I realized, man, I would have been able to prepare for that meeting and had all my ducks in a row if I would have simply checked my calendar in the morning. When I'm doing all these other things like my numbers and my gratitude list, why don't I simply make a little checklist item to check my calendar every day? And sure enough, I don't miss meetings anymore. I don't miss appointments anymore. And I'm prepared if I need to do something before an appointment. I, I, a lot of times I make it. I'm not perfect, but a lot of times I make it. So check that out. So now I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the right side of this journal. This is gonna be custom to everybody, but I wanna show you a live demonstration of what the journal looks like for me for tomorrow. So I filled this out just to show you what it looks like. So I, I like to put the day, which is Friday, and I spell it out. I put Friday and a little dash. That dash means what time I woke up. So I'm gonna put, you know, 4 a.m. or 4.45 or whatever time I get up, it's gonna go out next to Friday. Then I'll put the date always at the top. I put a, a dollar sign. This is where my net worth goes. When I'm doing my numbers, one of the last things that I do, I like to calculate the net worth. And there's a simple tool that I've created that most of you have access to, but if you don't, message me and I'll send it to you. But the personal financial statement gives you this net worth number every day. I like to put it right here and watch that number grow. It's really kind of cool. This number right here, all I have is a dollar sign, but this is where I want you to stop right now and do this with me. We'll come back to that. This is goals. So this is where I write down everything that I'm gonna do for that day in the journal goes in, in this goal list. We're gonna talk about priority management in just a minute, but before we do that, the dollar sign that was under the net worth, that is a, it's a simple number that doesn't change, okay? That is my daily income. So what I want you to do is if you're on salary, or you get a regular paycheck, okay? I would like for you to take that number, What? look for the, stop this and get your pay stub, find that number that shows, was entered into your checking account. Whatever that number that went into your bank account, take that number and I want you to, to divide it by the number of the days in, in that pay period. What I'm trying to get down to is a daily income. What is the daily income that you make so that we can write it at the top of this journal as the income made from the salary job? So if you don't have a salary job, but you have a regular paycheck based on regular hours because you work X amount of hours, I'm trying to get you to, to come up with a, a set number that you can write down at the top of your journal. Under this is where we're going to list our daily expenses, okay? So just for example purposes here, I'm gonna go back and show you when I was doing my numbers uh, today, okay? We had um, income here and then two expenses. So $155 went out on uh, selective insurance, $250 went out and changed to Northwestern Mutual Insurance. You can see the net worth up there and then goals, okay? So these are the goals and I'm gonna go through that. Let's talk about goals and priorities you know, for the day. 
a lot of times when I'm writing my gratitude list and working on my uh, numbers in the morning, my brain starts ticking and I start to think about what do I have to do today? What are the things that I, I, I must get done today? And as I'm thinking about those and they're coming out, I'll stop writing the gratitude list and I'll go over under the goals section and I'll write down, uh, take checks to telco. I had to do that today. Um, send folks spreadsheets. You know, I had to send four people these uh, these Google Sheets documents that I created as tools. That dawned on me first thing this morning as I'm working on my numbers and doing my gratitude list. When I'm sitting in my journal in my quiet time, I'm not checking online, social media. I haven't checked email yet. I would strongly encourage you, by the way, to do as much as you can before you check work email. <laughs> Might sound backwards, but most people show up to work and the first thing they do is they check email. I don't recommend that. Now, that might be impossible for some people. I get, I get it. It's a habit that I've worked on and I don't do it perfectly, but the best, my best days are when I get to work and the first thing I do is I do my, my gratitude list, my 10th step, I, I write my, my bookends out, my quick prayer list, affirmations, fears, needs, feelings, ideas, I do that. Doesn't take that long, I promise. But as I'm doing that, I'm writing my goals. So what happens is at the top of this goal list are the things that I know I've got to do today, okay? If it's something that has to be done today, I would encourage you to put an A beside it. Leave enough room that you can put an A beside it, okay? These are things that must be done today. The world's gonna to come to an end if these items don't get done today. Now, what happens if you get to the end of the day and you're looking back on your journal list from yesterday of things that you wanted to do? If you have A's that didn't get checked off, you either did it and didn't check it off or those really weren't A's. They were really just B's disguised as A's, okay? And you got, you messed up and called them an A. You didn't mess them up. You might've just not had time, but I would encourage you to only put A's next to things that are mandatory and must get done for that day. So stop right here, put your goals, list the things that are you know, all in your head. If you wanna stop the video, that's fine. We're gonna keep going but I would encourage you to list out everything that you need to do, whether it's pay a bill, help with your daughter with homework, uh, cut the grass, wash the car, feed the chickens, whatever you need to do, list everything. And then what I like to do is go back and as I'm reading through the list, I write an A next to everything that needs to be done for the day. Now, I've developed little tricks like Thank you notes are T slash N, okay? Um, F U means follow up. V M means voicemail. There's little tricks that I've I've learned to use in in my journal. I'm gonna just show you one page. This was a busier day than normal, but this was Wednesday, okay? These are all the things on the on, on the goals side, okay? And you can see they're not all A's. This was an A, this was an A, these were A's. Um, as I knocked them off, I checked them off, all right? There's several on here that aren't done yet. So what I would encourage, encourage you to do is what I call moving them forward. So all I do is I simply like where that A is, I'll simply draw an arrow over and that means move it forward. So your know, priority management training tells us to push things out as far as you can. They encourage us to push items out as far, far, far as you can. Like if you know today is Thursday, if, if I know I'm not gonna be able to plant the pansies in the front yard, until Saturday, no need to put it on Friday's goal list. 
right? So I'll go ahead and, and write out you know, Friday and Saturday, just at the top of the page, I'll put the date and put the, the whatever day it is. And then under goals, I'll go ahead and put plant pansies on Saturday, okay? Um, there's a technique of pushing those things out as far as you can so that you don't have to look at them every day. For example, tomorrow's Friday, okay? I, I've got a pretty long list of items that I didn't get done on Wednesday, but if I don't do them tomorrow, the weekend's coming and I'm gonna be home, I'm not going to do them over the weekend. What I'll do is I'll, I'll on my Friday mornings, I'll take a moment and move all of the, the things that I know I'm not gonna to do tomorrow, I'll move them to Monday. That's, that's a way of not having to look at these things uh, all weekend and not having to write them over several times. There is a, there's a thought process in writing these tasks that sometimes I'm telling you, there, there are times when it's just better for me to knock it out and do the, do the task or do the little project than write it in my journal one more time and move it forward one more time. Sometimes it ju it's just better to do it and knock it out. Um, there's a five minute rule that if something takes five minutes or less to complete, do it right then. I would encourage you to remember that. That's called the five minute rule. There's some of these things on here that might take 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes that are not a prior, you know, priorities that on a Friday morning, I like to block out about two hours of my schedule. Friday mornings are when I do my weekly review. Uh, getting things done talks about a weekly review. I like to, that's when I clean up my inbox. Now, today, I actually got my inbox down to zero. It's a miracle. Uh, I cleaned out my inbox. I will catch up my journal on Friday mornings. What does that mean? Catching up my journal means that there are no days prior to today's date in the journal that have not been moved forward, okay? So I have a little system that I use and I encourage you to use it if you want. Uh, you can see right here on the left-hand side of the journal, there's not a check mark. But if you go back to this date, Here, there is a check mark. Okay, this state has a check mark. This state has a check mark. This state has a check mark. And what that is is, as I have completed and moved forward all of the journal items. For example, this right here, it says one check mark and two arrows. So this one got completed. These two I moved forward. So I moved those two items to whatever date whether it's that day that I'm on or a future date. I wasn't able to com com complete the items, but I want to make sure that nothing's falling through the cracks, okay? So as I complete the date, you know, like this was 11-1, as I complete that date and, I and I'm looking through and there's nothing on here that, that is left undone, I'll put a check mark in the top of the corner of the page, in the top left-hand corner of the page. That means that I know all of my action items and my goals that I tried to complete on that day are either moved forward because I didn't get to them or I didn't want to do them. They're, they're moved forward or they're, they're, they're knocked out. Now, one thing we have not talked about, this is a journal that I take into every meeting. You will not find me in a meeting without this journal. You won't find me on a phone call to a client, on a phone call to uh, uh, you know, chasing down something for my wife, you know, anything. You won't find me without this, this journal. As I'm taking notes about that call or that webinar or whatever it is, as I'm taking notes about it, I'm writing it on that day, okay? under the goals, because the goals normally don't 
go down very far. They'll go down here. So somewhere down in the bottom of the right hand page of the journal, I'll write notes. So this was from a webinar that I attended and my job was to critique the webinar. Uh, these were three simple scribbles that I made while I was in clients' offices back in uh, when I went to Charlotte two days ago. The point is, I, I, I'm able to check off that day and move uh, move on to the next day when I know that those notes are put where they should be. Maybe I need to put those notes into our CRM sales software. Maybe I need to put those notes into um, an email to a client or an email to a coworker about something. But once I'm done with all the action items on the page and there's no items left undone, I'll check it and move on. So that's that's a lot about goals and priority management. Um, we talked about, just to recap, we talked about tracking what time I got up. You know, there's this saying that if you want to start tracking your time, you know, it's kind of like if you want to start tracking your money or tracking what you eat and the calorie intake, there's a book out there that it says just start tracking and doing you're know, tracking and writing down what you're doing currently. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to change anything. Just just write down what time you get up. Just start writing down what you spend, okay? And there's a psychological thing that happens with when you write down what you spend and you write down what time you get up, you start to get up earlier. You start to spend less and you start, start to be conscious of your spending. That book was written about food and it, it was saying, you know, before you start changing what you're eating, just start writing down what you actually eat. And he noticed that people, as they were writing down what they were eating, it just started to morph and get healthier and healthier as people realized they were right. They have to write down that they ate the macaroni and cheese and the Snickers. <laughs> they have to write those things down so you'd be surprised how many mornings when i'm trying to get up at four o'clock but i really don't want to get up at four o'clock but knowing that i gotta write down my journal what time i got up that it gets me up 15 minutes earlier or i, I don't hit that snooze button one more time um, i just actually get up so we talked about goals and priority management tracking time that i woke up tracking the net worth uh, tracking the daily spending. We talked about that. That goes under the income. We talked about tracking daily income and how to come up with that number of, you know, what is my, my daily income? Again, I'm encouraging you to take the post tax number, whatever cleared the bank from the pay stub that goes into your bank account, take that number and divide about how many days and put that number at the top of your your income uh, spending journal. And then we talked about what kind of journal to use, and I encourage you to go to pathofwarren.com to find out the, the kind of tools that I use and encourage you to get a real high quality journal and tool like a pencil or a pen. The next thing we're gonna talk about in a future video I'm going to talk about the PRG dashboard and I'm going to break down um, what are PRGs, what do I need to have to have a PRG, um, how often do I have one, what do I need to bring as far as an income plan, a spending plan, a debt repayment plan, savings and asset accumulation plan. Those are all like advanced topics, but what I'm trying to do to um, with these videos is to get you up to speed as quickly as possible so that you can be fast-tracked and move from vagueness to clarity around your numbers, around your time tracking, and around overall goals and, and priority management. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.